if you think of us as partners, he would clearly in historical experience have been the junior partner. I was no junior partner in that. Newt was not involved in that revolution when it came to the corruption and the scandal. He sat on the sidelines. I don't know that he has any track record of being able to organize a large-scale campaign that I'm describing. Well, we raised over a million dollars yesterday. That's one day. I mean, that's a pretty good start. Well, you came in open me. All friends sometimes do this with each other, don't they? You're listening to The Laura Ingram Show, 800 800- 876-4123. Uh, conservatives across the country uh, hopping on our Facebook page asking uh, questions. They hope we'll select them uh, to uh, ask and pose to, of course, Rick Santorum, who is the man of the moment in a new South Carolina poll just released. Uh, Mitt Romney at 27 and Rick Santorum at 24, Newt Gingrich, who was leading in South Carolina just a few weeks ago, Newt Gingrich at 18. So who's the junior partner now? Rick Santorum joins us. Rick, how are you? I'm doing great, Laura. Thanks for having me on again. I appreciate it. It's it's great to talk to you. So uh, yesterday, you, you old friends, you and Newt Gingrich seem to be taking a few swipes at each other. So does this mean at no point in the future could we see a Santorum uh, Gingrich alliance to thwart the establishment? Uh, you know, the campaigns aren't about alliances. Campaigns are about ideas. They're about candidates and their backgrounds. Uh, people aren't interested in uh, in that type of thing. They're, they're interested in selecting a president. And Newt's a friend. Uh, and he's someone who I uh, you really do enjoy. Uh, we have some differences, uh, and we have obviously some different takes on on uh, on, on the, uh, the events of uh, history when we served together. But again, let uh, let people look at it, look at the track record. Uh, you know, I, I stand by the fact that you know we we were the folks uh, along with John Boehner, Jim Nussel, uh, and, and and four other guys called the Gang of Seven. We're the ones that that uncovered the uh, corruption and in. in uh, in Washington, in the House of Representatives, and and stood up when no one else would. This corruption has been known. This is what people don't know. The House banking scandal, what was going on at the post office, there have been reports about this for years, and no one ever had the courage to stand up and fight and take it on. Why? Because both Republicans and Democrats were doing it. It was the old boys' network, as, as bad as you could see it, and we stood up as freshman members and said, we're not doing this anymore. We're going we're gonna to fight. We had, the, we had the Speaker. We had the Republican leaders that were putting pressure on us. I will say, in, in all honesty about Newt, he was not one of them, but there were a lot of other Republican leaders that were putting pressure on us to back down. And so uh, we didn't. And if you look at the uh, election of 1994, uh, certainly ideas were important, but the corruption that was going on in Washington, D.C., that we stood up for and we fought against was a mm-hmm. big part of why we won that election. Rick, Rick, would you be where you are without Newt Gingrich today? Oh, I, I don't think so. I mean, I, you know, obviously a lot of people who contribute to it, but Newt was someone who, you know, when I decided to run for Congress, I had not really had any kind of exposure uh, to to a lot of federal issues. I was a guy that uh, really was interested in state politics. I never really thought about ever running for federal office. I just was so upset with my congressman that I just decided, well, you know, uh, someone's got to run. And and I knew and his uh, tapes go pack and and, and things out of heritage and uh, and and some of the other uh, conservative uh, groups and uh, you know in the country were places where I went to sort of get schooled up. Ideas, on, on a lot of these ideas. Things. Yeah, the I- ideas end up mattering. And and I remember back at the debate, it was one of your really fine debate performances over the last five hundred that uh, <laughs> that you've been involved in. <laughs> and uh, and when you were you were one of the few people on stage, I think the only one who answered the question. You know, uh, what about vice presidents? Who, who would yeah. be in your top pick, and who was the person you named? Yeah, I said Newt because you know Newt is a is a wealth of of ideas. He's a he really is a a great thinker on on a whole variety of issues. You know, the the the, the important thing is to be able to have a. Um, to be able to sift through some good ideas and some not so good ideas, uh, but he certainly is someone who has who has a a, uh, a really uh, solid uh, you know uh, uh, you know mind to be able to, to tear apart problems and and come up with innovative solutions. Have any of your top staff uh, been speaking? Newt's top staff and your top staff about, and not now, because look, you have the momentum and, and you have the, I think you're rightfully uh, saying, look, I'm the viable person here and you, and Newt has a lot of fight and experience, but I'm viable and, and I have the, I have the wind at my back. And, but, you know, down the road, 
uh, you you have to be. I think Romney's gaming things out four and five steps ahead. So you guys, I know, are doing the same thing. So top staff. Uh, speaking to each other about a possible Santorum uh, Gingrich or Santorum Gingrich Perry uh, a coalition that works together for the betterment of the movement. I, I think those things sort of naturally happen. Uh, we, you know, I think everybody recognizes that uh, that Governor Romney is the establishment moderate candidate, and this, you know, John McCain sort of confirmed that. I mean, he's next in line, just like John McCain was next in line. That's Don't you two cancel sure. each other out, Rick? Don't you and Newt Gingrich down the road, if Romney continues the juggernaut of the buzzsaw, the, uh, the negative ad, super PAC, and you get caught up in that as well, don't, don't you and Newt and maybe Perry end up canceling each other out so his divide-and-conquer strategy ends up hurting all of you and, some would argue, conservatism? Uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't, it, that was the argument that was made in Iowa. They made it over and over again. You get, you know, please join with Perry. Please join with Bachman. You've got to get together. You've got to do this. Otherwise, Romney's going to, going to run away with this. And it didn't happen. Uh, and, and, you know, we, we, uh, we were able to, to rise out of the pack and, and, and catch Governor Ron. Right. We're beyond Iowa, though, now, right? So how do you win the South without the help from people like Newt and maybe even Rick Perry? Wouldn't they be helpful well, to you? Uh, of course, I mean, of, of course it'd be helpful. <laughs> Obviously, going one-on-one with Mitt Romney right now would be uh, the best possible scenario, but you know, I, I don't make that decision. There are the people in this race who have a right to be in this race and have a right to, to, uh, to put forth their ideas, and, and uh, I just feel like we have to run our campaign, and if we run our campaign and, and talk about our ideas and talk about how we're the, we're the authentic conservative, we're the, we're the person who has the courage to go out and lead this country and has the record of doing so, uh, I believe that, that the conservative movement will align behind us, and it hasn't done that yet. It's starting to do that, and we hope that if we continue to run a good campaign and stand up to the uh, withering assault that has been coming, that uh, people will find us worthy to do it. And that, you have to go through this, Laura, and you know that. I mean, you have to show that you can, you can handle the pressure, that you can deal with the problems that... Uh, that, that any candidate's going to have to deal with right. because nobody's record is perfect. Well, there are str- and right. we're going well, through that process. Yeah, there are strengths there are strength in numbers, however, and I think what just, you know, history repeats itself until it doesn't, but it takes bold and unconventional thinking to get past that, you know, that that historical uh, you know, barrier that is always there when the anti-establishment person goes up against the old guard and the in the in the in the same types who are counting you out all along. And I think you're beginning to see perhaps the establishment folks coming forward to put you into that buzzsaw today. You see the New York Times uh, article today, and I, I'm sure this will be mentioned on, at the debate this weekend. You know, you leave the Senate, and then you end up, you know, getting paid by Universal Health Services and, and various lobbying groups that end up paying you a lot of money. So uh, how are you well, then the reformer? Uh, That's what well, they're going to be on. doing to you. I, I, I went on the board of a public company. Uh, I, I mean, is that is that uh, something that is somehow nefarious? I mean, I was on the board of a public company that uh, that it, because of my work on healthcare, I did a tremendous amount, as you know, a tremendous amount of work. I was one of the authors of, of medical savings accounts. I worked on Medicare reform and uh, and Medicaid reform. I mean, this was an area of uh, of expertise. I'd worked with hospitals uh, throughout the the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and, and uh, someone saw that as an asset who had. Obviously, government has an increasing role to play in, in, in health care, and so I was asked to serve on the board. I, and and it, I'm, I'm very proud of that work. I'm very proud of the company. I, you know, I have to work, uh, and I have certain skills that I can bring to the table and certain experiences, and I don't, I don't apologize at all for, uh, for that work. There. Is that different from what Newt did with Freddie? Is that different from what Newt did with Freddie, then? Well, yes, these are things that I believe. I believe in private sector health care. It's a private sector health care company. And, uh, and I, I believe that we, by the way, that the, uh, uh, the CEO of that company came out and opposed Obamacare because he believes in private sector health care, too. And, uh, you know, this was the kind of company I wanted to belong to that believes that we need to, we need to have a, a competitive marketplace in health care, that we don't need government-run health care. And uh, I felt very comfortable there, unlike supporting things that were inconsistent with my values. Do you think that 
in these debates this weekend, Rick, and so, you know, I don't, it doesn't bother me at all that you did any of this. I mean, I think people have a right to make a living when they leave Congress, and the things that you did actually comport with what you believe down the lines. Right. It doesn't bother me at all. But you know what is going to be done with the buzzsaw and the meat grinder, or whatever you want to call it, and, and the New York Times is, you know, leading the charge with a little help from their friends in the establishment, I think, on that one. Uh, but sure. but when you when you look, uh, uh, Rick, at this debate, these debates this weekend, the big question uh, for a lot of us is, Will Rick Santorum take the gloves off against Romney on issues like the VAT tax, where a good friend of mine at Cato yesterday, Dan Mitchell, said, if Mitt Romney is elected, Laura, you can bet your bottom dollar that there will be a push almost right off the bat for a VAT tax to solve our financial woes. Will you hit him on that issue? I I, I saw that. I saw that he's not ruled out a VAT tax. Let me be very clear. There will be no VAT tax out of the Cantorum administration. We, uh, we, we don't need that. We don't want a value-added tax, a hidden tax. It's an insidious tax that, that is used in most of the Western world uh, to, uh, to grow the size and scale of government. Uh, taxes should be uh, you know, transparent, uh, and, and people, should, uh, people should, should know the pain when they pay them. Uh, so, so, no, I will not support a VAT tax, and I will make sure that, uh, that the folks at the debate that night, uh, the subject matter comes around, know that that's another difference between me and Governor Romney. And on this issue that we just learned out today, where the Massachusetts uh, health care plan has been uh, extended to illegal immigrants, according to the uh, state's highest court, uh, what is your reaction to that news? That's, uh, again, New York Times and Boston Globe uh, running big with this. It's not surprising. I mean, you, you create these government benefits and you have courts that are out there. And, you know, this is not, should not be a surprise to anybody that, when government benefits are extended, courts consistently rule that people who are in this country have a right to the same things that, that whether you're here legally or not. That's why we have a whole variety of different, uh, uh, you know, services that must, education, for example, must be made available according to the courts of people who are in this country illegally because they're, uh, they're, they're residents of the country. These, anyone who passes any kind of government mandated benefit has to know that this is going to be subject to uh, to illegals uh, being able to get those benefits. Should Mitt be held, uh, at least in part, responsible for this? Well, if you look at the track record of other benefits that have been that have been uh, put in place by states, and the fact that courts, uh, many courts, not all, but many courts have have ruled that those benefits have to be extended, then it would be sort of logical to assume that that would happen in this case too. You were asked uh, yesterday, Rick, about you know uh, people kind of worry about, you know, there has to be a Jesus candidate in the race, and you answered, well, yes, there has to be a Jesus candidate. What, what, what did you mean by that? Well, I said, if you, if you, if you watch the whole quote, uh, quote, what I said was, of course we want people that believe in God, not necessarily Jesus. I mean, I answered Jesus candidate because they asked the question, you know, should there be a Jesus candidate? So I just responded in kind to the language he used, but what I was talking about, and very clearly talking about, that you really, don't you want your leaders to uh, to believe in something uh, you know higher than than themselves or, or some sort of trans uh, you know uh, 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 what's the word I'm saying? all of a sudden uh, 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 brought a blank but some uh, some something higher than themselves some somebody who uh, who they're accountable yeah, transcends to, the, 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 something that transcends, transcends the moment. There it is, trans- yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm at Keen, so I'm thinking transcendental. So I'm in Keen. Yeah, I got, believe me, my mind is addled today. <laughs> it's just some transcendent God uh, or transcendent uh, figure. Those are those are important. Uh, and 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 I and I went on to say, you know, we say God bless America. Do you mean it, I mean, or you just sort of say it? Do you actually believe that 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 there is a God and that and that He should bless America and that and that we are accountable uh, to that as an individual. And I think, I think it's important. Uh, that doesn't mean there are people who don't believe in God can't serve as president, but I believe it's important to, uh, I think it's always been an important part of America and our, and our values and our history. Rick, do you think that your rise is also um, partly the, the rebirth of compassionate conservatism? Uh, I, I, you know, if, it's, it's really interesting. I, I hear folks, you know, calling about compassionate conservatism. I'm a big government conservative, and it, it's coming primarily from sort of the more libertarian uh, of folks within our within our party, and who just uh, who believe uh, that you know there really isn't a whole lot of room for government and a whole lot of in in, in anything. And I sort of describe myself as you know <clears throat> using a football analogy that I believe that. 
that the country should be run with a referee who runs up and down the sidelines, doesn't call a penalty on every play, but calls it when it's necessary to make sure that people keep within the rules of the games. They, the, the folks that, uh, that are criticizing me believe that there, there doesn't need to be any referee. We just set rules and we play the game and people will, will be able to play without them. I just don't agree with that. So would you be more of a Reagan conservative or a Bush conservative? Uh, I'm, I think if you look at my, my record, I'm, I'm very much a Reagan conservative and uh, believe in it. I've, I've been open about some of the mistakes I've made uh, with, uh, with Bush and the No Child Left Behind bill and said that that's something I would not have voted for. There were some things that, that we did under Bush that, that were clearly expansions of government that, that were unwarranted and, and were political and not based on good, sound public policy. Uh, Rick Santorum will be watching you, and I think from this interview we can conclude that the gloves will be off on uh, and on policy differences and in, uh, I think, painting the portrait of, of what's at stake in this country this weekend. And we look forward to it, and we've really admired how you've run your campaign, and it's it, you got the wind at your back. And I hope that you and Newt and all, all the conservatives are talking to each other. There's nothing wrong with talking to each other. I, think, I no, hope I, and I think you're doing I would- that. I would agree with that. I just, you know, we're going we're gonna to work, work together to, to make sure we defeat Barack Obama, and I'm all for that. All right. Rick Santorum on The Laura Ingram Show.